Hey everyone, Dr. Alex Ritzy here, and in today's video, I'm gonna get you all ready for the holidays for your plane, train, automobile, travel, wherever you may be going, because in the office at this time of year, invariably I'm fielding questions. Alex, Dr. Alex, how do I make sure that my neck, my back, my blank doesn't bother me when I'm going across the world, across the country, down the street? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about how to move, what to move, why somebody's back might bother them when they're in a plane, a train, an automobile, and we're gonna talk prevention. Uh, I think first off, let's talk about science, let's talk about why this is happening. Uh, sometimes somebody's gonna get pain in their mode of transport because there's a problem with their spine, that symptom, that ouch, that is your body telling you, hey, you have a problem. Now, that's not gonna be everybody, in fact, that's not gonna be most people. Most people, when they get discomfort, when they are traveling, it is going to be because they have repetitive strain and their body is telling them, hey, please move me, you're straining me. Uh, because ultimately the body is not designed to sit in a tin can flying across the Pacific. We are evolved to hunt, to gather, to move, and our body loves movement and doesn't like being strained and not moving for long periods of time. So that's the why, and then the what and the how to fix this is, just like I would say to people if they have an office job, a couple of principles. Principle number one, we wanna move frequently, specifically every 20 minutes. This is not rocket science, it's not hard. It's just hard to change your behavior, hard to implement as a strategy. So when I am driving down to Leamington in a few weeks, it is going to be every 20 minutes, I'm gonna be doing some pelvic tilts. So I'm tilting my pelvic bone back and forward, so I'm tucking the tail in, sticking the tail out, tucking the tail in, sticking the tail out, or I'm doing some actual seated cat camels. A little bit more for the mid back and the neck, whereas those pelvic tilts are gonna be more for the low back, which usually bugs me. It's usually the only time I get low back pain is on a long car ride. Spine doesn't like it, that's how I fix it. You can also be doing some hula hoops, where I'm just trying to rotate the pelvis differently from the mid back, or it might just be like sitting back, getting a stretch, sitting back, getting a stretch. Sometimes I'll get really close up over the steering wheel just to give a little bit of relief to the low back. The key is just to move. Now, obviously, don't crash your car. If you're in cruise control, sometimes I'll also get up out of my seat a little bit, give it a wiggle, sit back down. Like I said, it's not rocket science. The key is just to remember to build a habit, to build a ritual, to build a routine so that this becomes your new normal. If you keep moving your spine, less likely to bother you. If you have a problem with your spine, this is still gonna help, it just might not be as effective. Principle number two I share with people in terms of their ergonomics at their desk is making sure spine is soft against their chair. So obviously this is a little bit more difficult in a plane than it is in a car. In a car, you can move that seat typically as long as you don't have an older car and even if you do, uh, a little bit more upright is usually helpful. And if you need to put a towel or a pillow just to make sure there are no gaps between your spine and your chair, that could be helpful. You don't need to force the back into extension. We just wanna make sure there are no gaps between the spine and the chair so that the spine is soft against the chair. That's principle number two, spine soft against chair. In a plane, less good quality seat, less comfortable. I don't know, I've never flown business class, so I don't know, maybe business class is a better chair, it probably is. But spine soft against chair, you could put a pillow or a rolled up towel or even just a blanket. You're not trying to force anything, make sure there are no gaps between spine and chair. That will make a big difference. In a plane, especially if you've got a long flight, you definitely want to do some pedaling of the feet to make sure that you're pumping blood back up out of the ankles. That's to, to minimize the risk of something serious like a deep vein thrombosis, get that blood pumping back up. That could be really important, especially if you have any blood clotting or stasis issues. Um, and then principle number three when we talk about sitting is making sure ear is over shoulder. And it's not really a huge issue while traveling unless driving is really bad and you've got your head as close to the windshield as you can so you don't crash, that's really the only concern. Otherwise, you don't really need to worry too much about ear over shoulder. If your spine is soft against the chair, that's usually gonna take care of that. So, I hope that's helpful for you two guys. Good, that was in English. I hope that's helpful for you guys. Not a lot of uh, life-changing information there in terms of 
So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Maybe surprising of how simple it can be. Those small movements, they do go a long way when repeated frequently. Um, in terms of some other questions I might get, should I get a neck pillow? Research is pretty wishy-washy on this. Research will tell you no. I would tell most people yes, if it's going to prevent you from falling asleep like this or falling asleep in a position where your spine is not supported, it will hopefully fill that gap. Otherwise, movement, movement, movement is good. If you fall asleep on the plane, make sure you've got a partner there to correct you and move you a little bit. And then of course, if you're a passenger, it's usually easier to meet those requirements because you're not focused on the road. It's easier to move around a little bit. If you can get out and take a break, if you can get a few steps in when you stop at an en route or you can walk down the cabin to the bathroom, that is always good. But move, 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 move is the key. Anyways, if I don't see you guys soon, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, a happy new year, and best of luck rolling into 2023.